Landboards presents Differential Oscilloscope Probe Card. So what is a differential scope probe and when would I use one? A fundamental reason to use a differential probe with your oscilloscope is to isolate your signal from earth ground and chassis ground and scope ground. One thing that it's easy to lose sight on with oscilloscopes is that all of the probe grounds are connected to earth ground. The other subtlety is that each of the programs are all connected to each other and they're not isolated in the ground. Differential scope probes effectively float scope inputs from each other and from earth or chassis ground. This means that differential probes can help you probe different points in a design that are at different ground references. You can also probe differential signals with a differential probe. There are some very fine commercial products available on the market, but they're also very expensive. Most of these products are very powerful, but they're well beyond the reach of the average home hobbyist or even small business. I took a look around the web and found a linear tech data sheet or application note on their own design for a differential active amplifier for scope probe. Um, here's the schematic for that card. We decided to make one of the cards for ourselves, and here's a photograph of that card. The linear tech design had some features we really did like. <laughs> the primary feature is that it had differential probe functionality, which is the goal. The linear tech design allowed for operation from a 9-volt battery and had a light and a switch on it. There were also some features we didn't like and we changed. The LTC card had an SMA, but we prefer BNC that can be cabled up to the oscilloscope. We also like to use 5mm terminal blocks, and we use those for the DC power connection, as well as the input differential signal connections. The most significant change is that since they had a unity gain result with a 2.5 volt rail-to-rail um, -rail swing, that would result in an input that is only 0 to 2.5, and, and for logic, you typically want to be 5 volts. So we put a 10 to 1 scaler on the front of it. We wanted the power switch and the LED to be located on the rear of the card as well so that it could be mounted in a box. We're pleased with the result and think it'll make a valuable addition to our test equipment. One of the cool things about the linear tech design was that it came with a spice model for simulating the circuit. We recorded some of our own screen captures off of the differential card. Here's the card on a much wider time frame. You can see the AC coupling. Um, here's zoomed into the a smaller time frame. It shows more droop than uh, the simulation showed. And here's the rise time edge with the same sort of uh, capacitively coupled droop. Changing the linear tech simulation to the same one millisecond time scale shows the same decay function from the capacitively coupled inputs. One of the things that the app note states is that the circuit may need a gimmick cap added to reduce spurious oscillation. And sure enough, there's a 125 kilohertz sine wave running even when the inputs are shorted. Here's the actual text from the Linear Tech webpage for the card. In Linear Tech's application here, it looks like they put a piece of Kapton tape on top of the card and then added a wire on top of that. An unfortunate choice that Linear Tech made is that their simulation and their schematic don't match for reference designators. Uh, looking at R13, we can see that the schematic does match to the PC board, though. The gimmick cap is a 0.07 puff cap at location C2. You can see the simulation for what it looks like with that cap, and with that cap removed, it shows quite a bit of oscillation. That is why they have it, apparently. Linear Tech has a note on the bottom of the simulation page which notes that about the capacitance, the gimmick cap. Our board implementation uses the same reference designators as their design did, so the value of the reference designator for the feedback resistor is R6. Looking at the Linear Tech layout, it looks like they tack the wire for the stray capacitor on the output side of the resistor and op amp. The other side is left floating. So I dug around a bit and found out that the oscillation was coming in from the power. I switched from a wall wart style power supply to a DC battery, 9 volt battery, and it still didn't work. Um, then I added a 47 microfarad capacitor across the power pins out of the regulator, and it cleaned it up. 
here's a screen cap of a five volt pulse. Note it should be a half a volt total, but the overshoot and undershoot at the beginning are really, really large. You need to take a look at that next. Here the function generator is set to a square wave at 500 kilohertz and five volts with a 50% duty cycle. This is the input waveform. It swings plus and minus two and a half volts with respect to ground. This will be continued in part two. Thanks for watching our video and if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.